getting settled, I have two announcements, or at least I have one announcement. And where's somebody that knows about the finances? Who knows about the finances of this event? What's the answer? Who knows? So I'll make the one I know. <clears throat> when um, Sandesara, how are we doing with the finances for this event? Are we breaking even yet or not? Do you have a rough idea of what we're, we're, the shortfall is? The shortfall is two grand. Two grand. So those of you that are <clears throat> happy to see us break even from this event, <clears throat> and would like to participate in helping us break even for this event. Who should they see? This is Sadhyasar. He gets a nice round of applause for all of you. He used to work for Microsoft, where he learned about teams, because that's their model, they work with teams. So he knows how to work with teams. And I don't know if you walk through the kitchen or this and that and the other thing. There's been a, a lot of teamwork to make this event possible. And he wants to thank his team and I want to thank him for organizing the teams and getting everybody to participate. <clears throat> and it would be really nice if we break even. And those of you that want to help us break even, you can see him just be a participant in, in that little exercise if you'd like. And uh, one other <clears throat> part that I played in, in uh, helping to arrange for the event was having Juta Gopi and her team that came from New York to participate in the, the Nama Yagya Saturday night. Was it a nice kirtan? So, in anticipation of their coming, their, her brother couldn't come. I was like, I practically broke his arm, but he still was saying no. And not just twisted, I, and I was taking help from his father, and his father couldn't get a yes either. He has other commitments and he couldn't come. But anticipating you to go becoming and knowing what her kirtan is like, I told her father that the inspiration to have her come came when I was just taking prasad and listening to her kirtans like I often do because her kirtans are really awesome. So I asked her father when the, the answer was yes, she can come, to put together on a digital whatever you call it, your device, a USB stick or a thumb drive or whatever. So over a gigabyte's worth of her recordings is available, and I forget to mention it. So those of you that are interested, who has them? Who has the them? Front desk. Excuse me? Front desk. Front, the front desk, the registration desk downstairs. Um, I'm not even sure what the donation is, some donation, and. She'll use it for her purposes, or give to Radha Govinda, or 
26 Second Avenue. We, last time we had an event here, there was something like that, and it, all the everything went to 26 Second Avenue because that's the place where it all began. And they don't have a congregation other than the people who support them remotely. So you can whatever she wants because it's it's her intellectual property for wonderful care time. So there's um, a master <coughs> little thumb drive. And then if you want, you can go there and make your donation and get a copy. It's pretty fast. It takes about 30 seconds and they'll have a set of her recorded kirtans, the favorites of her father. She probably has many more gigabytes worth of kirtan. So I meant to mention that when they came, but I forgot. And then somebody reminded me, so I'll share it. Okay, so now we'll begin our little Ceremony. You want kirtan while you do this, or okay? Who's our kirtan team?
Do we have some for the initiates here? Raise your hand if you'd like a copy. We don't have a whoops, we don't have any more. We're gonna have to share. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchi Ananda Vigraha Anahadi Hari Govinda Sarvakarakanam Chintani Prakara Sarna Sukham Pavriksha Lakshara Kesya Sarabhi Pavitaliyantam Lakshmi Sahasra Shatta Sambrana Sema
sound vibration is very purifying. So the topic I would like to speak about to connect what we're doing today with um, the theme of the weekend, Say Yes to Krishna, is Say Yes to Krishna in the form of Krishna's name and in the form of sacred sound vibration. So we'll start with, uh, for those that have not experienced initiation ceremony, what's going on here. Um, what's going on here is a ceremony where there's formal submission unto the disciplic succession and Krishna and formal acceptance by Krishna and the disciplic succession of someone who is on the path of devotion to Krishna and over some period of time they have examined the bhakti process and they wish to be formally accepted by Krishna. This is the procedure for that formal acceptance. It's something like um, getting a diploma from a university having completed some studies or something like that, a certificate of acceptance by the universe, not just the applying and you, you now you're a student. It's the, it's the ceremony that you're officially accepted. So, uh, for those of you that are from India, you know about the term Gotra. Gotra indicates the family in which you're born. And there's a lineage of that Gotra and you accept not only a first name, second name, but you're part of a gotra, a lineage. And that's with the birth of the body. Then dvija, or the second birth, ja indicating birth, dvija is second birth. It's the formal acceptance by Krishna and then you're, you don't like give up your previous gotra, but you accept a transcendental gotra Prabhupada's explanation is Achuta Gotra. Achuta meaning Krishna. The, the, the Gotra of Krishna. You're in, you become part of Krishna's family. If you remember, I've been repeating it several times, so probably you're tired of hearing it. But from the first day, that verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says to Sanatana Goswami, one who takes full shelter of me, I then accept that surrendered soul as an intimate associate of mine. Intimate associate of mine. So we're, we're remote. <laughs> Not yet intimate associates of Krishna, but we're accepted as part of Krishna's family. And that's a big deal. Because actually, we're all part of, and parcel of Krishna. Unfortunately, not only we forgot, that's, you know, the, that's the consequence of the greatest misfortune, we turned our back. And we didn't even, it wasn't even a polite goodbye. We just turned our back and walked <clears throat> into a dark place looking for happiness, leaving our real happiness, looking for non-existent happiness, the happiness of separate from Krishna happiness doesn't exist. 
something like <clears throat> an image in a mirror looks like the object that is reflected in the mirror, but there's no substance in that reflection. Exactly the metaphor given in chapter 15, Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> this material, <clears throat> the material world is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world. Perverted reflection in the sense that it's distorted. It's not the, it's not the real thing. And it's a distorted version of the real thing. It's, it's just like mirrors that are, you know, the house of mirrors. I, I've never been there, but I've heard about it. Mirrors that make you look really tall, or make you look really short, or make you look wavy, or make you look fat, or make you look skinny, or practically. You know, it's just a reflection. It's not you, it's just the reflection. Or on the surface of water, if there's wind on the surface of water, then there's ripples. And so something may be reflected in the water, but it's a distorted distorted reflection of the, the object. The mind. Sometimes the mind gets disturbed. Sometimes. Like a flame where there's wind and the flame is flickering because of the wind. Sometimes it goes out, but flickering. Chanchala himana Krishna Arjuna says, the mind is chanchala flickering. Krishna says, yes, the mind is flickering. But somehow we're meant to bring the mind to an unflickering position, to the shelter of Krishna position, as mentioned. When we're chanting japa, it's, it's really nice, it's very simple. It's us, and then the name, and the mind. And sometimes it's a battle. And sometimes it's nice. And we're meant to come to the position where it's, it's nice. Just being with Krishna is nice. And we don't need something else because we're with Krishna, because we're fully satisfied being with Krishna. So, Initiation means recognizing that Krishna and through the agency of the disciplic succession representing Krishna, one is accepted as part of Krishna's family. That's a big deal. And it's a beginning. That's why it's called initiation. It's not perfection. And that beginning means that one must continue and continue and continue and continue. As we've been discussing, the bottomless ocean of surrender, of saying yes to Krishna, of humility, of all good Vaishnava qualities that Krishna, by his own volition, may decorate his devotee with, nice qualities. So that's what we're doing here today. This is the formal acceptance by Krishna through disciplic succession, accepting the submission Bhakti Siddhanta teaches that the, the essence, he gave a, there's a transcription, or um, I guess a transcription, of a lecture that he gave. How did they have a transcription? Because he must have, they didn't have recording devices then. Anyway, <clears throat> transcription of a, a lecture that he gave at initiation, and he explained the essence of initiation is these two things, submission and acceptance from the devotee side, submission, and from Krishna's side, acceptance. And he goes on to say that the experience, apparently it was a, a large initiation, the experience for each initiate will be different, depending upon the degree of submission. And then he goes on to say that that submission needs to be continued because if submission slackens, then the connection becomes weak. And when the connection becomes weak, then material tendencies kick in again. Because it's not that you submit to Krishna and there's never again attraction for matter. The tendency for attraction for matter lingers a long time. Eventually, the bhakti process can take it away. 
not only take it away, but take the, you heard, the, the subtle body. Dissolve false ego. That's a celebration. Dissolve the material mind. Yay! Dissolve material intelligence and be just situated in one's spiritual identity, in one's relationship with Krishna. That's Bhakti has that power. Bhakti alone has that power. So chanting of the holy name is association with Krishna directly. So this is the first what what we're doing now the message in relation to what we're doing along the theme the say yes to Krishna part a very important part I'll say it a few times just so it by emphasis it maybe it'll stick um, one of the most important parts of the process of chanting effectively is recognizing that the name and the object named Krishna and his name, person Krishna and the name Krishna are literally not different. There's a nice verse from Padma Purana that says that. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purnushato Nitya Mukto Then this last line. Abhinatvam Nama Namino Nama Namino the name and the object named. It's grammatical. Name and the object named are non-different. Abhina. Dina and Abhina. Different and non-different. Abhina Tvam. Tvam is having the quality of non-difference between the name and the object named, or in this case, the person. Krishna. So, probably all of us, without exception, we're chanting. And when chanting, we're accustomed to two things, minimally. We're accustomed to being doers. You know what I mean? Karta aham, I'm the doer. Well, I'm, I'm going to do it. We've learned it since we were kids. I'm going to, whatever, I'm going to take this course and I'm going to do really well in the course. I'm going to take up this sport and do really well in this sport. I'm going to learn Radanga and become really good. I'm going to do it. So that we're very familiar with that territory of doership. And the process of bhakti is to let go of that notion of I'm going to do it. Instead, take up the position of the subordinate servant of Krishna and let me act in my relationship as the subordinate servant of Krishna. But to do that, I require mercy. So there's some, some in, we make endeavor, this is our scriptures teaching us, we make some endeavor, abhyasa, we make some endeavor, but the endeavor is not going to be successful without mercy. We've been discussing this. Anukogena Krishna Anushilana. The Anushilana is the effort we cultivate, but we're dependent completely upon the object that we're endeavoring to connect with, because otherwise, on our own, we can't do it. We can't bring our mind to the vision of steadiness upon Krishna. And we can all chant. Anyone can chant. But the, the effectiveness of that chanting is only going to be accomplished if we avoid offenses. Now I'm going to speak a little bit about, because Prabhupada, but usually when performing initiation, speak about offenses, I'm just going to speak a little bit. The, consider carefully, I invite you, please, consider carefully the 10 offenses and you will find that each of the ten offenses has something to do with considering that which is spiritual to be not spiritual. Looking at something spiritual through a material lens. 
and the offense is using the material lens to see something spiritual. It's not only not right, according to our scriptures, it's an offense. We want to avoid it, but gee whiz, we're not there yet. We don't, we don't have that clarity and purity. And therefore, the clearing stage is carefully guarding against those things. So it's advised for those who are initiated, and particularly this morning for the initiates, carefully guard against the ten offenses. Starting with this one, considering the name of Krishna to be himself, instead of considering the name of Krishna to be a material vibration. As, for example, one of the offenses is to consider the names of Krishna to be one of the karma khanda rituals found within the Vedas. So what does that mean? Karma khanda rituals are for the purpose of material elevation. And there's this practice, that mantra, these rituals that increase your piety so that you can prosper in this life and the next life. Go to heaven. And to consider the name of Krishna like that, not only not right, it's an offense. So to, so to avoid that offense, you go to the place of the name of Krishna is not different than Krishna. It takes some cultivation because we're used to material sound vibration where the object and the name of the object are different. But this is not the case. So now I'm going to go to um, Canto 11, Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 21. And I invite those of you that, are, that like to read Bhagavatam to take some time and read it. It's Krishna speaking to Uddhava. It's the Uddhava Gita section of the Bhagavatam where Krishna is giving Uddhava, who is topmost scholar, and therefore the level of their discussion is high, it's not entry level discussion. And Krishna is giving um, Uddhava a picture in sound of the Vedic process, that's the title of the chapter, the Vedic process. So we hear from the Vedas that the Vedas exist before creation, during creation, and after annihilation. They're eternal. As, as eternal as Narayana is eternal, the Vedas are co-eternal. So are we. The soul is co eternal It's fully spiritual. And those Vedic sound vibrations, they deal with a whole range of subject matters including these karmakanda things down here, and then the totally transcendental things over here. And things in between. So I'm, uh, I'm not going to go through the detail of chapter 21, but some, um, one of the rules of leadership, that, that those that teach leadership, teach and those that our leaders, they follow, give credit where credit is due, just like giving credit to Satyasar for uh, hours and hours and hours and all the other people. I mean, one of the amazing things of this event is how well organized the activities for the children are. I mean, those of you that are parents, Dream, close your eyes and dream of something that's wonderful and here it is. And it's just even this year, teenage boys and teenage girls has been added. I think it's one of the things that brings people back again year after year is their kids say, well, that's, let's go to the Gidanagri retreat. <laughs> we had such a great time. Even it rained, I saw Dhruva, Prabhu, temple president, as I was exiting yesterday and he was over under, underneath the, one of the tents where it was raining, while it was raining. And he said, Krishna is very kind. He, it was going to be, the, the prediction was lots of rain, and it was so mild. And Drova said, he didn't, 
here that say yes to Krishna class. So he said, yeah, but you know, the kids were going out for this nice hike or some excursion yesterday evening and the rain came and they had to come back. Yes, but the prediction was so, it was rain every day, heavy rain every day, rain and rain and rain. So, um, lots of appreciation for the devotees that have been in, engaged in taking care of, not taking care of the children like babysitting, but giving activities that are in the association of others, their age and something they can relate to and putting Krishna in the center somehow. Even playing cricket, I guess you can put Krishna in the center. <laughs> for those who are making sacrifice for Krishna is um, as part of our devotional life and uh, yeah when, when Krishna is at the center then we should see that which is spiritual as spiritual and, and go beyond seeing that which is not oh, so the, and the Vedas have all this yes that's it the Vedas have all this range of dealing even with the basic affairs so we're used to I'm just going to give, yeah, give credit where credit is due. There we go. Um, seated over here is a nice devotee from the um, George Mason University who read a Bhagavad Gita because one devotee kindly gave her a Bhagavad Gita and the light went on. This is it. This is what I've been looking for for however many years old she is. And very quickly, because of her eagerness to learn, eagerness to want to know about consciousness specifically, we had this discussion about how sound affects consciousness. So she wrote a little paper on how sound affects consciousness, and all of you that registered will get a copy in your email box. If you didn't register, please register, so we can give you a copy in the email box. And we can also break even with this event. And um, so one of the sections of this little document that you'll get describes chapter 21, canto 11, where Krishna is outlining the, the Vedic process. The Vedic process is based on sound. And he identifies there's four categories of Vedic sound, you know, aside, aside from mundane sound that abundant in this world. There's Vedic sound vibration that it's as eternal as Krishna is and way over here on this end is Vaikari sound and that's the sound that's carried in ether that we're used to hearing. And there's then way over the other end is Para sound and Para sound is the sound of Krishna's name, and the, 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 the Brahma Samhita prayers, and everything that's of the fully spiritual nature, there's non difference between the sound and the object that the sound was describing. Then way over on this end, is there's no connect, it's, it's conventional only, <coughs> that a sound, let's say, chair. You know, in some other, some other language or some other culture, they have a different word for chair. So the chair, the word, the sound, is a symbol of something, but the sound and the object are totally different. That's Vaikari sound, there's Para sound, and there's two other kinds in between, where there's a greater connection between the sound and the object, and then there's the, the, the sound and the object are strongly connected and then there's the absolute position.
So it's an offense to think that the name, this para sound, is the same as regular sound. You know, the sound that we're... We can hear this para sound, but it doesn't require any intellectual, this Prabhupada's word, any, any intellectual adjustment. Like, what does it mean to interpret it or something or other? Just hear it. Now, there can be an explanation of what it is. That's fine. And that may enhance your hearing. But the essence is hearing. Because the object and the sound vibration are not different. So the whole of the Vedic process, which is chapter 21, is to carry one through sound, depending upon your evolution or your trajectory of spiritual evolution, up to the stage of entering into the realm of transcendence through sound. That's the whole, the whole, the whole purpose of creation. Because we find in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, along with creation, I presented this process of sacrifice. It's within the Vedas. That's what the Vedas is. And so there's the sacrifice of the hearing process of para shabda, or oporusheya shabda, or transcendental messages that come from the spiritual realm that tell us what that spiritual realm is. All, you just have to hear it with, with, a little, with little aptitude or desire. I'd like to know. Not nothing more. Not belief or disbelief. Just, I'd like to know. Here's this interesting sound. Let me hear. Within that act of initial hearing, there's some faith. Because otherwise, some people don't want to hear. They run the other way. But... Just to hear, there's some faith, and that faith becomes nurtured or nourished by sound. So we give a special emphasis to the name, because that's the pinnacle of this para. Within the name is everything. Nijasarva shaktis. Within the name of Krishna is all of Krishna's potencies. That's a lot of potency. Because there's everything spiritual and everything material. It's unlimited, and both ends, spiritual material, it's all within Krishna's name. That's really power-packed. And the, those potencies are meant to reveal Him. Vedas Jasaya Vaya Aham Evadyo, according to Bhagavad Gita. The purpose of the Vedas is to know Him. And you can't know Him without being in your relationship with Him being in a relationship of bhakti, a loving, at least attempting, to please Krishna through the, the, the activities that we do that may be of this world. So the Vedas give the direction, the codes of conduct, how to do those things that we have tendency to do in such a way will elevate our consciousness and ultimately to the stage of full absorption in para, transcendental sound. So, that's the message this morning. Say yes to Krishna, ultimately, in the form of His holy name. And, side by side with Krishna's holy name, is the sound of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam is, is explicitly about Krishna, but it includes all kinds of nice things about Krishna, including Vedic sacrifices and karmakanda activities and the process of creation and all kinds of stuff within Sh because they're aspects of Krishna. That's why it's there. And it's meant to bring our attention to the source and appreciate how wonderful is that source, how loving is that source, how kind is that source. Let me take shelter there. So this enhances that, and that enhances this, and they're, they're, it's a perfect companion. The, the, the gift of our founder, Acharya, is to give us the name, because that was the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Yuga Dharma, chanting the name, and to help us access the name 
Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam to come to the stage of Shuddha Nam, Shuddha Bhakti, unmixed. Shuddha means no mix of the temporary affinity for the temporary. While we're doing things of this world, where it's not of this world, that's, that's our, our life. So say yes to Krishna in the form of his name and the sound. Now just one other thing, this part of the ten offenses, <clears throat> one of the ten offenses is to, um, as mentioned, to equalize the other portions of the Vedas with um, the, 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 the holy name. However, there's another rendering of the Sanskrit which says, you should not criticize, you should not criticize the other portions of the Vedas, they're not of this para standard of sound. Because the other portions of the Vedas, they're there to elevate. So while recognizing their purpose, we don't criticize them. They're to assist persons to come to that ultimate stage. So that's another rendering of that, that offense. Don't criticize the Vedas. But it's not an ordinary sound. It's part of the Vedic sound. It's elevating sound because it's directly, it's eternal from Lord Narayana to help the living entity navigate their way through this dark place with light. And the, the bright light, the brightest of that bright light is the Srimad Bhagavatam according to the scriptures that we hear from our Acharyas. So we recognize the relative weight or significance of these different portions of the Vedas and we honor them, the different portions of the Vedas, for their respective purposes. Say yes to Krishna's name and say yes to spiritual sound and by doing so gradually, by hearing carefully with as much attention as we can, hearing with us, not just doing, but hearing as much as fully as we can. Rapt attention is Prabhupada's language, the hearing the Bhagavatam and hearing the name. We'll be able to see Krishna, not become Krishna, but we can be in our relationship with, intimately in our relationship with Him. So this is the initiation process that uh, entitles the devotee to or be recognized as part of Krishna's family. And so a name of Krishna or Krishna's family is given for the, the devotees who are going to be initiated. <coughs> Those of you that have not seen this and, and vows are taken to commitment along with the acceptance. All the, all, all the elements of standard scriptural elements are here, including the, the sacrificial arena in the middle of the floor. It's, it, we're, it's a Vedic process that we're following, the process of initiation. So, um, I think we'll go to the, the vows. It's already by that tonight. What I'll, I'll do is there's some there's two families and there's other individuals and I'll speak to the individuals. Swetadvip is sitting in the middle in the back and he's going to receive his Gayatri mantra and then be eligible to do deity worship in the Houston temple and he's looking forward to that. So we won't call his name because later he'll receive Gayatri mantra with the other individuals. I, I'm going to, where's her portable microphone? Uh, Paramarupa, could you, and we're gonna invite one person to speak something about the candidates and he's gonna speak something about you. Uh, go ahead and speak. First of all, I was very fortunate to witness the rapid transformation 
that happens when will meets grace, like that's what one of the things that I uh, heard in this whole seminar, but I saw the, that manifestation in the life of Yuli. Um, I met Yuli in her last year. Last semester. Last semester. Of her last year. <laughs> she came to Northeastern University program and... Undergraduate. <laughs> I'm editing, so that the audience can understand. I'm sorry. And um, and my meeting her happened just practically speaking one week before Maharaj is coming to Northeastern University. And I was also very eager to share with Maharaj that I met a very sincere individual. Very interestingly, in that meeting. Maharaj invited her to participate in Brahma Samhita seminar that was about to happen in wow. Seattle. And I was wondering, wow. <laughs> and not only that, she was invited, she had already booked her flight to go there when I came to know. <laughs> and then, um, in this way I found every single opportunity that came her way, she was very eager, very sincere, very serious to take upon that opportunity for elevation in Krishna consciousness. And on the side of uh, Guru Maharaj, he had bestowed innumerable occasions um, or innumerable amount of time he has spent to work with her, whatever is necessary for her to get out of the blocks that are coming her way and because Guru Maharaj has also mentioned to me personally that how dear Yuli is to him so we also from our side did certain things which uh, we probably would never do for any other devotee um, and overall I found that because of the eagerness on her side and because of the the mercy that she was receiving from the spiritual master. Um, the, this is the most rapid progress that I've ever seen in the life of a devotee. And from her side, um, also her conceptions had been always very clear. And at every point in time, she had been developing very, very um, strong relationship with her spiritual master. And that also came out uh, very clearly when she took disciples course with me. Uh, although she was junior most in terms of the number of years in her Krishna consciousness, she scored the highest marks. Now, of course, like uh, I'm, I'm emphasizing on this just to indicate like how um, clear her conceptions were, um, even though she has spent very short time in Krishna consciousness. I'm sorry, Yuli, for embarrassing you too much. <laughs> um, at the same time, I am very sad that uh, in a month's time she would be leaving for her personal reasons. But at the same time, my support, well wishes and prayers would be always there with her. I'm going to edit one more thing. Uh, for her graduate study at Brandeis University, she stayed in Parmarupa's home along with his wife and two children, at least for a while, until her mom and dad came to visit her. <laughs> she found another place to stay for a while, because mom and dad might not feel so good about that. There we go. Okay. Her next destination is New Zealand. She's a very adventurous young lady. <laughs> and uh, she'll be staying at their ashram to get immersed in training in Krishna consciousness. I don't know how mom and dad are going to take that, but they're okay. So, so, so. So, uh, 
happy to have you join Krishna's family. Could you come before Shiva Prabhupada over here and offer your obeisances? things about Paramarupa <laughs> and how he and his wife helped in your Krishna consciousness. And then the next group of people that will help, the next group of people. Krishna has been providing resources for you again and again, like magically. So Krishna has affection for you too. That's clear. Okay, so uh, how many rounds you'll chant every day? and the rules that you'll follow. Very good. And you'll carefully follow Prabhupada's teachings. Yes. The initiated name is Ujwala Devi Dasi. <laughs> Ujjwala means full of dazzling splendor. And sometimes our acharyas also use that term to indicate the conjugal rasa or madhurya rasa, ujjwala rasa, full of dazzling splendor. So, um, Ram Tulsi, where are you? Ram Tulsi? Ah, can you give her the microphone, please? She's going to say something about her friend from Seattle. Hare Krishna. I have known Mataji for almost five years now. And <laughs> I can tell about her. She is a very enthusiastic and regulated devotee. She loves Srimad Bhagavatam. She loves to talk about Krishna. You start any conversation with her and she'll make sure Krishna is there in that conversation. <laughs> if, <laughs> if the conversation goes off topic, she will she will bring it back to Krishna. She will make sure to bring it back to Krishna. <laughs> she is a regular attendee of Sankirtan. She goes every week without fail. Every week she'll be there for hours and hours. She's an inspiration for all of us at Seattle. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Her husband is here also. He wanted to go to Sadhu Sangha retreat. There was a discussion about coming here instead and he very supportive of his good wife making this step in Krishna consciousness. So I'm very happy that he came to give that support. Thank you. So the, your vows, the, 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 how many rounds you chant on these nice beads every day? Okay, and the rules that you'll follow? Okay. And you'll very carefully follow the teachings of our founder, Charya Shiva Prabhupada, yeah? Okay, your initiated name is Sneha Vali Devi Das. Sneha means affection and 
Mali means creeper, a creeper of affection. Nice name for her, right? Snake Mali. So, um, I can speak something about Pragya, but then others that don't have me speaking about that person may feel and so would you like to see something about your lovely daughter? <laughs> Should I ask your husband to say something about your lovely you you no? Okay, I'll say something about your lovely daughter. <clears throat> I've known this family for Ten years? So, way back when I first met the family, they, I uh, was visiting in Minneapolis where the family lived, and Prankia was six years old, and I don't know where she got the idea, but she said, can I be initiated? <laughs> and I asked her, how many rounds are you chanting? She said, six. <laughs> So I said, well, how about this? When's your next birthday, such and such? So when you turn seven, you chant seven rounds. And when you turn, and just add one round every year until you're 16, and then you can be initiated. So you know what? That's what she did. She's 16, taking vows of initiation for the rest of her life. But anyone that's done like that, I can understand. It's not, plus I know pragya. It's not the mind, it's the heart. Her heart is with Krishna, and her mother shares with me how her heart is with Krishna in, in speaking clearly the message of devotion to the family members. You know how it is in families, but you know, without the detail, I was hoping she would say. Um, it, it's not an uncommon thing in Krishna conscious families that the children are so devotional, it inspires the parents. It's not an uncommon thing. Of course, the parents are also quite devotional to this, in this particular family, but she's an inspiration, certainly for the family and for me. She's a wonderful devotee. So. <clears throat> Ten years later. <laughs> How many rounds you'll chant every day for the rest of your life? Minimum 16. And the four rules that you'll follow? Okay. And you're not even nervous. Most young people are nervous. <laughs> Very strong. So good. And you'll carefully follow Srila Prabhupada's teachings for the rest of your life, yes? Your initiated name is Rasamayi. Rasamayi Devi Dasi Mataji Ki Rasamayi means very sweet. Or full of nectar or full of rasa. Rasamayi. Baby Dasi. So, Shantidari, where are you? Can you take the microphone, please? It's nice to have more than one person speak something, but we have too many somebody, so we're doing it this way. Hare Krishna. I, I met Sheshadri Prabhu first time at workplace in 2005, I believe, 2005 or 2006. He was a typical Indian, he was criticizing Krishna for that and this. <laughs> <laughs> I 
during the lunch time and break time and then, and then things changed he changed his job and I didn't see him for quite some time until 2011 I believe in 2011 again I met him at the temple Potomac temple literally in tears he was as soon as he saw me, he immediately said, I, I really need someone to guide me in my life. I need a guru. He was crying and very next week, Maharaj was coming to Premitarangini Mataji's home. We had a home program and we invited him. I think that's when he's, he changed his life. And soon, both of them, he brought his wife also into Krishna consciousness and gradually progressing. A um, lot of transformation from where he was to where he is today. A lot of progress, but a lot of transformation happened in these years in relationships and submission. One thing about him is that he need to be always engaged in service, otherwise he can't be peaceful. And that's a very tough time. Thank you. Think something about his wife? Who's going to do that? Oh, your wife. Okay. First, Sheshadri Prabhu came to our Bhakti Viksha and, um, and she, she, she was not interested because she was into some yogic thing. Um, that, that time that time she used to work. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I used to make sure that you know, just send some prasadam with Prabhu <laughs> to her. <laughs> then uh, she, she felt obliged. <laughs> To have my prasadam, you know, every week, um, and just to come and see me. <laughs> then, uh, in that way, she started. She, she came, and the next, she liked it, you know, the the, the devotees and association. And the next week, next week, slowly, um, she just came and you know, she just caught into <laughs> Krishna consciousness, and you know, she is happy. Um, very open-minded and uh, always looks for any corrections, you know, always asks for, you know, how can I grow. Um, I'm happy to assist her in her Krishna consciousness for myself to grow. Hare Krishna. Okay, so initiation vows, it's already 9.25. Well, you don't even ask the other question. <laughs> Keep going. The four rules that you follow are? Minimum 16 rounds of charity. Yeah. No intoxication, no repeating, no gambling. What's the other one? <laughs> oh, okay. And you'll carefully follow Srila Prabhupada's teachings. Okay. Your initiated name is Shakshi Gopal Das. <laughs> For those of you that are new here, Shachi Gopal is a wonderful deity with a long story found in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Shachi means witness. He, he, the deity walked all the way from Vrindavan to the other side of the country to support and bear witness to the vow of his dear devotee Brahman, Shakshi Gopal, and is now being worshipped there, previously residing in Vrindavan, now in Orissa, near Puri. Okay. Okay. And like your good husband, you'll carefully follow Prabhupada's teachings for the rest of your life.
initiated name is Raga Manjari Devi. Raga Manjari Devi Dasi Mataji Ki Jai. This name, Raga Manjari, is uh, the name that Raghunath Bhatta Goswami was in Krishna Lila. We have that information from Chaitanya Charitamrita and Gauraguna Deshtapika, Raga, Manjri. And last but not least, Raman, Raksha, come. Where is Narada? And you'll be ready also, please. Where is Narada? Uh, who is, your voice is not good, Narada? Okay, we have this substitute. <coughs> Ramchandra over here. Over by the Vyasa sign. Hare Krishna. So, the Ramanaksha, they're part of the Tawaku, New Jersey congregation. It was a couple of years back uh, when I was giving a Sunday class. Uh, that was the first time they came to Tawako. And right after the class, they came and approached me. Uh, Raksha was one of them who had a big smile on her face, always smiling. Always. And Ram was totally opposite, very grave. <laughs> so I wasn't sure about my class. Was it a good class or was it a bad class? But uh, since then, uh, they have been part of our Bhakti Vriksha programs, which I'm leading there. They have been uh, part of the Prabhupada Sena program, which is every Wednesday program, which Narottam Prabhu has been leading. They're part of our Sunday feast program, Sunday feast cooking. They've been part of our Sankirtan department, going out distributing books and kirtans. The first things that I remember Ram asked that what is the foundation, Prabhuji, please in a nutshell if you could tell us what, what we should be doing. And I said keep it very simple. Come to temple on Sundays, attend your Bhakti Riksha programs. During the class, be in the class. When there is kirtan, be in the kirtans. Don't be outside when somebody is speaking. And since then, and there's been many instructions, like whenever I get a call from Ram Prabhu during the work time, I usually close my office door, I go into a conference room because I know he has, a, he has a question. He's always asking questions, but whatever answers he gets, he, he puts into his life. He, he, he practically applies it. That's the greatness about the couple. And um, Raksha also very, very enthusiastic. Uh, they have been all over the place, been traveling to many, many temples, serving in many in large capacities. And I am very happy to be here today. I saw them the first day today at their initiations. Um, may Krishna bless them. I'll, maybe Maharaj, can I ask my wife to say a few words for Akshay? You want who, who to? My wife. Sure. Obviously. Fantastic. Take it over there. Raise your hand so he knows who you are. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Um, we are so happy uh, for both of them today. Uh, but uh, Ram and Praksha, they have been part of our Bhakti Vriksha and also Tawako congregation for past uh, three to four years now. And uh, I've seen her going ups and downs in her life, but they always uh, wanted to be with devotees. Uh, they always, they never left devotee association. And that's what uh, kept her going. Uh, and it was like, at one point it was not turning back. She just looked ahead and um, today she's taking initiation. So we are very proud uh, of both of them. In Bhakti, especially uh, about Raksha, that she's been, everybody knows here, but she's always been enthusiastic in Bhakti Raksha in temple. So even if we are down, when we look at her, we get, you know, charged up. <laughs> so, uh, you know, she's very inspired, inspiring uh, to a lot of our Bhakti Raksha members. And um, 
she is a very good cook she serves and cooks in the temple uh, for the deities uh, and uh, very good with kids also takes care of very uh, you know happy and enthusiastic with kids also uh, and uh, we are very happy that you know she is taking initiation today very happy for uh, uh, her um, I'm sure she must be missing her mother and sisters also, but uh, we are uh, there as her family, so we just want to welcome her in this Krishna Conscious Big Family. Hare Krishna. Seated right behind you with glasses is Sri Radhika. And I think I saw her eyebrow go up when you said she's really good with kids because she's in charge of the, the children's program over here. <laughs> Let's see what happens at next year's event. <laughs> she may have a, and some added service next year. Let's see. Although she loves to hear, she loves to, she's right in front always and as, as Ramchandra said, big smile. I've seen her cry too, but mainly it's big smile. <laughs> okay. Ram. So, uh, the, how many rounds do you chant every day for the rest of your life? <coughs> Minimum 16. The rules that you'll follow? And you'll carefully follow Prabhupada's teachings as best you can for your life long. The initiated name is Rama Shalana Das. Rama Shalana Das Prabhu Ki Shalana is right on the theme of what we've been doing this weekend is saying yes to Krishna. So we can say yes to Ram, that's okay too. <laughs> How many rounds you'll chant every day for the rest of your life? Strong, minimum 16. And the four rules that you'll follow? No meat, no intoxication, no sex, no Okay. And like your good husband, you'll carefully follow Prabhupada's teaching. Look at her big smile. <laughs> initiated name is Rukmavati Devi Dasi. Mataji. Rukmavati was the wife of Pradumna, who was Krishna's son, and Pradumna and Rukmavati became the father and mother of Aniruddha. Those are two of the Chaturvyuha forms of the Lord in Dwarka. Mama over here. Okay, shall we go? Come along. 
lost to ten. <laughs> Namo Prabhupada Devaya. Namo 